This week on The Wire, renewed confidence amongst home buyers, vacancies remain tight, and Aussies clueless about rates. Welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in finance, real estate, and investment. Before we kick it off, guys, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, all their retirement. We do it using only what people currently have available to them. Them right now and we do it using very high customer satisfaction ratings. Now, whether it's your first time viewing in or you're a long time follower, thanks for joining us guys. Without you, this video series wouldn't be possible Possible, and we know that you could be spending your time plenty other places apart from here, so we really do appreciate your attention. Um, now, of course, we love to see your interaction with these posts, so please like, love, angry, comment, question, tell us how you feel, tell us what you think. Don't forget also our Just Ask Tim video series where I could be answering your question live, so send your questions through as well. And finally, guys, the only thing that we ask uh, is that you share this uh, this video with your friends and family on your social media platforms. Uh, it keeps me inspired to do these videos and it also helps us build a bigger audience while uh, you know sharing this valuable information with your friends and family. But now let's get into the top stories happening this week on The Wire. So, renewed confidence amongst home buyers. So the latest lending figures released by the ABS confirm that there's renewed confidence amongst home buyers. So Australians borrowed 2% more in June than they did in May. So financing uh, issued to owner occupiers rose by 2.4% to $12.4 billion, while investment loads increased by 0.5% to $4.37 billion. And these figures don't include refinancing. These, these are only new purchases, right? So in June, we saw rises in the new lending commitments for both owner occupiers and investors the dwellings for the first time in over a year. And this comes from Ben Dorper, uh, Director of Financial Statistics at the ABS. Investor lending, however, remains well down from its peak and the rise in June was relatively small. Now, market watchers say the improvement in lending figures could be brought about by the recent series of positive events. So this being the, the coalition election win, the interest rate changes, and also the changes to the way that APRA requires banks to assess their customers. Um, the June figures reflect the positive election, the post, excuse me, the post-election boost in confidence following the removal of the uncertainty around property taxation. This comes from Adrian Kelly, President of the Real Estate Institute of Australia. With two interest rate cuts and a softening in APRA requirements, June marks an upturn in market activity. And by the way, this is also prior to us heading into the spring selling season where we typically see much better performance. So stay tuned for that. Let's also move on to our next top story now. Vacancies remain tight. So vacancies remained low in most capital cities in July with national vacancy rates steady at 2.3%. This is according to SQM research. Now five of the eight state and territory capitals recorded decreases in their vacancy rate. Brisbane and Adelaide dropped by 0.1% while Perth, Canberra and Darwin recorded a 0.02% uh, decrease over the month. Now Sydney, Melbourne and Hobart remained steady over the, over the period. Sydney has the highest vacancy rate at three and a half percent compared to 2.8 percent at the same time last year and Melbourne remained at two percent in July increasing from 1.6 12 months ago vacancies are uh, sorry Hobart's vacancy rate was steady in July and continues to be the lowest in the country at 0.5 percent can you imagine that 0.5 percent vacancy and Adelaide's vacancy rate has been dropping steadily and is now at 1.1 percent the same tight level as Canberra which fell from 1.3 percent in June Perth's rental market is tightening and we've continued to see this over the past 18 months its vacancy rate is now 3%, down from 3.2% in June and 4% a year ago, providing further evidence of a recovery. Finally, Brisbane, which sat at 2.9% a year ago, is now at 2.4% as the rental market continues to strengthen. So our final top story for the week, Aussie clueless about rates. So Australians are in the dark about the official cash rate despite it reaching record lows. And this comes from comparison website uh, Finder. The official ca cash rate dropped to 1.0% in July after the Reserve Bank announced its decision to reduce the rate for a second time in consecutive months. But a survey by Finder shows 86% are oblivious to the new rate. 86% of people are oblivious to the new interest rate. Now, uh, which I find astounding, really. Uh, now, Bessie Hassan, the money expert at Finder, says knowing the cash rate is crucial. Even the smallest change to the cash rate can end up saving you tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, now, if borrowers fail to keep tabs on cash rate movements, they could be missing out on a golden opportunity to save big money by either negotiating a better rate or looking elsewhere. So the research found that 56% thinks the cash rate is higher than it is, with 13% assuming it to be between 5 and 10%. Just 10% of women and 18% of men could identify the correct rate. Hassan 
Sun says, economic ignorance is costing Australians. Keeping informed means knowing which direction rates are going. She says, take a look at your interest rate and compare it to what is being offered. It isn't up to scratch, maybe it's, if it isn't up to scratch, maybe it's time to refinance. And guys, if you've been following these video series, you know that there's a, several uh, lending institutions out there that, which are offering rates under three percent. So um, you know, if you're not if if you're not paying under four percent for an investment loan, you're not paying under three percent for a, a, an owner occupied loan. Then you want to be reaching out to us so that we can have our team look over and see you know how many thousands of dollars we can save you every single week. But guys, that covers it for the top stories happening this week. Couple of things before I go. Uh, once again, just please you know share these uh, these videos with your friends and family, guys. It helps them get the benefit of this value information and continues to help us build a bigger audience. Of course, we love to see your interaction with these posts. So please like, love, angry, comment, question. Don't forget our Just Ask Tim video series where I could be answering your question live. So send your questions through as well. You can just put on our social media platforms. Uh, and finally, guys, uh, just remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you want to take care of your finances. You've got to start thinking ahead. Um, that's it from me, guys. I'll be coming at you on Tuesday with our Just Ask Tim video series. Uh, but apart from that, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend and I will speak to you soon. Thanks guys. Have a great day. Bye.